Okay, the first family I'd like to do is called the profile. Essentially, we're just going to draw this profile right here. It's a basic cove molding. Then what we're going to do is we're going to load this into a project, and we're going to actually sweep it along some walls. But before we do that, we'll see that we're going to build some formulas to make this thing smart. So to get started, let's jump into Revit. Under Families, let's go New. Now, in my Look In, I want to browse down until I find Profile Hosted. Once Profile Hosted is selected, I'm going to click on Open, and here we go. Now, we'll notice that we have two reference planes. These are the most important part of a Revit family. These are what drive the model. I like to consider them the skeleton of the model. First and foremost, we add reference planes, we dimension them, and then we put our 3D extrusions or our line work on top of the reference planes so everything is flexible. Now, since this is going to be kind of a small profile, I want to change my scale. Instead of one inch equals a foot, I think I'm going to go to an inch and a half equals a foot. Now what I'd like to do is I'm going to go to my Manage tab, and I'm going to go to Project Units. I want to go into Length. I like to suppress a zero feet. I'm going to click OK. No, I'm going to click OK. All right, let's get started. What I want to do is I want to create a reference plane. So everything we do in a family is going to build off these two reference planes that are already here. To do it, the easiest way to make another reference plane, I think, is to select one that's already there, right-click on it, and create similar. Now, on my Draw panel, I want to click on my Pick Lines button. And I'm going to give it an offset of one foot. I'm going to hover over this reference plane and notice that my new reference plane is going to shoot off to the right. Once you see that temporary reference plane, pick it. Awesome. Now let's do one down. I'm going to pick here and I'm going to offset it downward. Excellent. Hit escape a couple of times. Now I want to dimension them before I get lost in reference planes. On my measure panel, I'm going to click on my aligned dimension button. Now it's very important the order in which we dimension these because this is considered our strong reference plane. This defines our origin. Right here is the insertion point. So when we dimension something, we have to go from our strong reference to our weak reference. Because if this dimension changes, I want this line to move, not this line. So dimension from your strong reference to your weak reference. Now just pick a point off of it. Do the same going down. Go from the strong reference to the weak reference and pick a point off of it. Now hit escape a couple of times. Select your top one foot dimension. Notice that we can add a label to it. If we click the drop down, we're going to add a parameter. For the name, I want to call it depth. Now, do we want it to be a type property or an instance property? We want it to be type because of the fact that we want all of these to change if we just change this one. So let's click OK. Now for our one foot dimension here, let's put another label on it. Let's add a parameter. Let's call this height. Now, we have to keep this a type parameter because we're going to involve this in a mathematical formula with our depth parameter. They have to be the same type. Let's click OK. Now, I want to have that little two inch reveal here and here. So I'm going to right click on this reference plane and I'm going to create similar. On my draw panel, I'm going to click on my pick lines button. And I'm going to offset this down two inches. Offset straight down two. I'm going to offset to the right two. Now I'm going to hit escape a couple of times. On my measure panel, I'm going to click aligned dimension. I'm going to go from my strong reference to my weak reference. Pick a point here. I'm going to go from my strong reference to my weak reference, and I'm going to pick a point right about here. I'm going to hit escape. Now I'm going to hold down my control key, and I'm going to select both of these two inch dimensions. Now for my label, I'm going to click the drop down here, and I'm going to click on add parameter. I'm going to call this reveal. Notice also how I'm using upper lower case. This is very important because when we have a mathematical formula, Revit is case sensitive. Let's click OK. Hit escape. All right, now let's draw our shape. So I'm going to go to my Create tab. I'm going to go to Line. And I'm going to go from here to here to here to here to here. Now on my Draw panel, I'm going to click on my Start and Radius Arc button. I'm going to just come straight up to here, pick that, and let it snap to the tangency. Pick right there. Now hit Escape. All right, we've got it drawn in. Pretty cool. Now what I want to do is on my properties, I want to take a look at my family types. So let's go up to family types. I want to add some formulas in here. I want my height to always equal my depth. Notice that in this area here, we can add formulas and they give us a little equal sign. So for my height, I want the formula to just say depth and then hit enter. Depth is one foot. Our height is going to be one foot. 
But for our reveal, what I'd like to do here is add an if statement. I want to say if the depth is less than 8 inches, I want my reveal to only be 1 inch. If it's greater than 8 inches, I want my reveal to be 2 inches. So, in the formula, let's type in the word if. Now, let's type in an open parenthesis. That would be shift 9. If depth, remember it's uppercase. Now, let's hit a space. Let's add the less than caret sign. If depth is less than 8 inches, then I want the reveal to be 1 inch. If not, comma, I want it 2 inches. Now we need to close the parenthesis and we hit enter. Notice that the reveal is grayed out. Now let's change our depth to 6 inches. Hit enter. Notice that the reveal changes to 1 inch. Click apply. Click OK. Everything has flexed along with it. OK, now let's make some family types. Let's go back to our family types. And I want to click right here, and I want to click on New Type. The name is going to be 6 inches. I'm going to click OK. Now let's click on New Type again. Type name is going to be 12 inches. Hit OK. Change your depth to 1 foot. Hit Apply. Hit OK. Now let's save this. I'm going to click my Save button. Browse to where you're keeping your exercise files. Now I'm going to call this Cove. So file name, type in Cove. Let's go to our options. Let's make sure we only have one backup. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to click on Save. Now let's test it in a project. So I'm going to click my purple R. And I'm going to go to New Project. I want to select my architectural template. And I want to click OK. Now on the Architecture tab, I'm going to click the Wall button. I'm going to hit the drop down. And I'm going to come up to Exterior Brick and CMU on Metal Stud. I don't care how high it is. And I'm just going to click on my Rectangle button. I'm going to draw a rectangle from here to here. I'm going to go to a 3D view. Now, we need to load that profile into here. So I like to come up here and click on Close Hidden Windows. Hit Control Tab. Now let's click Load into Project. Now let's select our wall. Let's click on Edit Type. Let's click on the Preview button right here. And make sure our view is set to Section. Now for our structure, I'm going to click on the Edit button. And down here, we have sweeps and reveals and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to click on Sweeps. I'm going to get rid of my Brick Soldier course. I'm just going to select it and delete it. But now I'm going to Add. And I'm going to hit the drop down. And I can either choose my Cove 12 inch or my Cove 6 inch. I'm going to go with the 12 inch one. My Material, I'm going to click into here. And I'm going to click my Builder button. And I'm just going to search for Concrete. So I'm going to type in C-O-N-C. And I'll find Concrete Precast, and I want to click OK. My Distance, let's type in minus one foot. Let's go from top. Click Apply. Now we'll see that it shows up right here. It's on the exterior side, which is good. So let's click OK. We can zoom in on it here. Let's click OK. Now we've got it. Now we'll see that we can use this cove sweep anywhere we want. All it was was a simple 2D line work.